Hey guys, welcome back to LBP tutorial number 27. Today we are going to be talking about audio implementation or implementing audio into your little big planet 2 levels. Alright, so to illustrate what I'm going to talk about today, I have set up uh, two identical scenes. The first one has not been audio passed and the second one has. So I'll just quickly show you the scene really quick. So we've got a little simple switch. It opens a door. And then when you run through the door, there are two rotating bits with bounce pads on. And it's just a really simple uh, gameplay section, and I failed that jump. Alright, so then I'll slide on over to the, uh, the audio passed version, and see if you can notice any difference. Same bits, but obviously we can hear that they have audio implementation, and that's it. So what I'm going to do today is show you really quickly how we can implement audio uh, quite nicely with the Little Big Planet tools into this uh, this little gameplay section. So I'm going to start by uh, adding some audio, some sounds to this platform or this door that moves up and down and to do that I'm going to be using a microchip to keep everything nice and tidy and most of what I'll be using today is the speed rotation and angle sensors that we got in the, the move pack update you don't need the move pack to have those but uh, they did come with that update and I'm going to use a speed sensor first of all for this up and down movement on the door and so I will change the axis to up and down only and then we'll go ahead and drop speed down to about three. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. It's just to get us some slight variation in the sound. And then for my sound, I'll use a servo movement. These servo movement uh, audio objects are great for this type of movement. And we'll go to servo mode three. Okay, and just press it down and it up. Alright, now we want to change the input action type to modify sound. So it's going to sound different when it goes up than from when it goes down because that's one of the, uh, the properties of the sound object. And then we can unpause and see what these really quick modifications have done for our scene. Okay, so we've got a really basic uh, sound added here. We're going to add a little bit more depth to this though because that's uh, it's pretty basic right now. We can do more with this. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make it play a sound when, it's, when it stops at the top and when it stops at the bottom. So your first inclination might be to just put a speed sensor with a knock gate and wire that to your sound. Um, but then we have that problem with when the level first loads it's not moving and so it would play the sound. So instead what we're going to do is add one step between what will be a speed sensor and our audio object and that is going to be a three port selector. And I'll explain what we're going to do with that in a second but first I'll set our maximum speed on our speed sensor to 0 0.1. So this is going to activate as soon as that platform starts moving at all. And then we'll just wire this into the third port on the selector state and then the output on that third port will go back into the input on the second port. So what this is going to do is by default the selector is at port 1 and so it's just sitting there. The only way that it can change is if this uh, the speed sensor activates the third port and then once the third port is no longer active, so this wire will turn off, then it will reset the selector back to its second port. And so that's going to simulate stopping the movement. And so that'll be our top and bottom of our door moving up and down. And we'll just throw a, let's see, let's choose an impact sound. We'll just choose a metal impact sound for that, heavy metal. And so when our door stops, that sound will play. So we should be able to observe the changes we've made already. You'll notice that it starts at that first port, and then when I pull the switch, the third port will light up and then reset, reset to the second once it stops. The only thing that selector serves to do is makes it so it doesn't play the sound when I unpause, which is what a not gate would do if you were to just replace it with that. Okay, so we have two levels of audio depth in our scene. I'm going to add one more thing, and that is just going to be some sort of feedback when you pull on this switch. 
Because you'll notice if I just, in the middle of its motion, I start flipping it back and forth, that that speed sensor that does our stop sound, it doesn't trigger anything because the door is continually moving. And we don't get any sort of feedback on that. So what I'm going to do is use a similar technique with that selector. I'm just going to make a copy of it. And we're going to wire our switch into that, similar to how our speed sensor for the for uh, the impact sound was working. So again, it's going to start at the first port. Once I flip the switch, it's going to light up the third port. Once I flip the switch back off, it will light up the second port. And I'm just going to throw two different sounds in there, so we get a, an on sound and an off sound. Let's space this out a little bit better. Okay, so the on or excuse me the off sound will be the top one and I'm just going to use switch 3 for that and then the the switching on sound I'll use just switch from the mechanic or mechanisms category and that's pretty much it so we can play with our, our scene here Let's see that we get a stop sound at the top we also get feedback when we flip the switch on and off. Okay. Now that uh, metal impact noise is a bit loud, so I'll go turn that down a little bit. And now I'm going to do a bit of a similar thing over here with these spinning bits. So once again, I'm going to pull out a microchip. Place that down on there. But instead of a speed sensor this time, we will use a rotation sensor. Okay, and I'll just bump the rotation speed up to about 100 because it's moving a bit faster than 20. And I'll choose another servo movement sound. Once again, these sounds are really nice for this sort of uh, audio implementation. Let's see, we will choose servo 4. Okay, it's a bit loud, so I'll turn it down slightly. And, we'll just that in. and of course, change the input action type to modify sound. You can choose modify volume as well. Modify sound is a bit different. You can play with that and see which one you like more. And then we can unpause and listen. This is quite nice. And again, to add one other layer of depth, I'm going to use a where are you? An angle sensor, and I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees on its side. What that's going to do is it's when this platform is faced up like that, you'll see that the uh, angle sensor is pointed straight up, so it will trigger once we get inside its uh, trigger angle radius range. And we'll go ahead and drop that to a really no low number, like 2. And then what that's going to do is it's going to play its sound, and I'm going to activate the bounce pads with that. So the bounce pads will be off until they are straight up and down. And for the sound of them turning on, I'll just use a flip light on, found under the on and off category. And then we'll just wire all these up. And we should be all set. So I'm pause this. We get some nice movement sounds, and we get that nice effect with the bounce pads turning on. Turn this sound down a little bit. It's a little, quite loud. And because I put it all in this microchip and there's no tag sensors or tags to lay down, I can quickly copy it over and then wire up all my bounce pads with no additional tweaking necessary. Okay, so our scene is pretty much where it was in the, uh, the sample of an audio version of level. Okay, I'm going to do one other thing, but I won't build that for you because it's been covered in one of my existing tutorials. I'll just copy it over. I did a light flickering tutorial. And I've got a sound built into that. Okay, so it's just, you can find this one by looking for my uh, probability tutorial. And all that does is it makes the light flicker on and off. And then I have added a sound into it. And then I'll just wire this into our light here. And this light is, of course, set to dimmer setting. So that when I unpause, you'll get a flickering light. Closely, you can hear that sound. Yeah. Yeah. Overpowered by the other sounds. But I can go ahead and copy this microchip then to the other lights that I have. You could make some of them flicker, you could make some of them not flicker. It's totally up to you. 
And we should be able to hear the result on this one. So there we get a nice little subtle flickering noise. And our scene, whoops, once it's all set up here. Our scene is pretty much done. Let's play through and listen to our final result. Some nice feedback on the door opening there. Once again, these spinning bits feel much more alive and dynamic. It's got that sound, and bounce pads are in the state. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is really simple examples of how we can use those, those uh, speed and movement sensors uh, from the Little Big Planet 2 update that came with the move pad. And it makes adding sounds to your levels very easy. And again, if you, have, if you see movement, you can probably add some sound to it in this map. So I hope you guys learned something, see some use out of all this. And I'm sure I'll see you soon in another tutorial. Take care, guys. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.